we'll just wait for the okay start okay um welcome back after the break uh before we went for our break we began looking at uh, uh, First Timothy chapter 5, we read the entire chapter and then we looked at, uh, uh, you know, how we could divide this uh, chapter into five sections and we began looking at verses 1, uh, 2 and 3, which talks about uh, relationships within uh, the church and uh, we looked at this word rebuke, what it really meant in this context. Uh, but if you look at uh, the same chapter, uh, verse 20, uh, you know, uh, Paul is again talking about rebuke there. And, uh, you know, he tells uh, Timothy there that, you know, there are times when not only should an elder be rebuked, but there are times when he should be rebuked uh, publicly. And that is what is mentioned in verse uh, uh, 20. So if you read verse 20, he says, those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest may also fear so uh, he again mentions that you know um, uh, not only that uh, an elder should be rebuked but there are times when he should be rebuked per, uh, publicly so, therefore in this verse in verse one when he says do not rebuke uh, it does not mean that timothy was told never to rebuke uh, somebody but uh, or an elder uh, in the church but he's telling him you know uh, don't rebuke in a harsh attacking manner but it's important that you correct people correct them in a loving encouraging way and not in a harsh attacking uh, manner and but he then he goes on to say that these older men who is referring about uh, who he needs to rebuke, correct them in a in a loving way, in a gentle way. He says, but exhort him as a, a father. So basically, exhortation or exhorting means to encourage. So do all that requires to be done regarding encouraging them. Uh, do things in a manner that is encouraging. Uh, you know, just like uh, and the idea here of encouraging is uh, how. Uh, a coach or a trainer, you know, encourages uh, the athlete that they are training to achieve their best. So this is the whole idea or picture, the context that uh, is talking about exhortation or exhorting them as a father. It's how a coach or a trainer would, uh, who is helping an athlete, you know, to achieve the best, how they would encourage them. He's saying the same way, you know, encourage uh, uh, these uh, elders, these older people, uh, as they are fathers in the house. And then he goes and talks about, goes on to talk about younger men as brothers. You know, he says the younger men should be treated as brothers. Uh, that is, you know, as someone who is a partner to you, as friends in the work of the gospel. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, even as you treat these younger men in a nice way, uh, don't show any difference to the older people or to the uh, adults. Treat them in the same way as you would treat younger uh, men. Then he goes on to talk about older women and he says that older women in the body of Christ in the church should be treated as mothers. They should be treated with respect and honor due to their age. And then he talks about younger women. He says these younger women should be treated as sisters um, and uh, as Timothy, you know, as a godly man, he must make sure that his conduct towards younger women is always pure and above reproach, just like he mentions in the preceding verses that we looked at, you know, uh, uh, live a life of godliness in purity. So he's talking about how he needs to treat younger women uh, uh, in, in his approach to them, the way he treats them, it should be pure and holy. Then in verse 3, he talks about honoring widows who are really uh, widows. Now, uh, at Paul's time and the time that Timothy lived, you know, there was uh, one class of people or one group of people who were very vulnerable, uh, that those were the elderly widows, uh, you know, um, and uh, you, they were usually people who were not able to support themselves uh, because their husbands are no more or they don't have children. Uh, or their children are not uh, supporting them and taking care of them and they have no means of working to adequately uh, support their, their own lives or to support themselves and uh, these kind of uh, widows 
he is talking are the really are the widows whom the church has to uh, care for and who have to uh, you know uh, uh, bring them under their care and protection and provide for them so he's saying who are really widows who are really widows are these widows who are elderly widows uh, he goes on to qualify and speak more about this in the in the in the other verses he talks about those who are 60 and above who are real widows who usually don't have any support from their husbands because their husbands are dead uh, or their children are grown up and you know they don't want to take care of them and they have no means of adequately supporting themselves these women are whom the church has to take care of so he's qualifying who these widows are that the church has to take care of because there are younger widows and uh, he talks about them uh, you know and what they need to do and what the church needs to do uh, regarding them so in this entire passage uh, that paul is writing in this in this part of this letter there are four types of four categories of widows that he mentions the first one is the real widows um, those who don't have any family members to care for them uh, which he, he talks about in uh, verses 3 to 5 and verses 9 to 10 he also talks about widows who have children and grandchildren who he mentions about uh, in verse uh, 4 and verse 16 and then he also talks about another category of widows talking about the younger widows who says you know they should remarry and uh, he talks about them uh, in verses 11 to 15 and then the last category the last type of widows he mentions in this uh, part of his letter in this passage in chapter 5 is widows who live for pleasure rather than for the Lord who he talks about in verse uh, 6 okay so we move on to verses um, 4 to 8 where he's talking about believers responsibility towards their own uh, family and here in this section of his letter paul is instructing timothy what must happen in the local church uh, uh you know uh, 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 regarding taking care of uh, widows he says but if any widow has children or grandchildren let them first learn to show piety at home and repay their parents for this is good and acceptable before uh, god so he says if you know there are widows who have children um you know, um, then these children should uh, take their responsibilities. It's their time to show uh, their love and take responsibility for uh, their, um, uh, their, uh, you know, uh, their parent who is widowed, you know, uh, or the mother who is widowed, uh, and take care of them uh, uh, because they have the means of taking care of them, of assisting them, of helping them. Uh, and because they have the means, you know, they should uh, uh, they should not leave them to the responsibility of the church. Uh, the church can take responsibility for those who are really widows, who are really in a need, who don't have a family to take care of them. So he says the children, he's, uh, you know, uh, talking to uh, children, grandchildren who have to rise up to this occasion and address the need of their uh, uh, of their widowed uh, mother or grandmother you know uh, and he says by doing this by taking care of them he's saying this is good and acceptable before god this is what is pleasing uh, uh, to god so this is also something this is the word of god this is something that also applies to us in our context that uh, we need to take care of our uh, elderly parents and if one of them is widowed we need to take care of their needs help them not just uh, dump them in a old age home under the care of the church or under the care of uh, you know uh, 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 people who are working in old age but it's our responsibility to take care of them because this is good and acceptable before God and we are accountable to God for how we take care of our um, parents okay um, and he says you know um, uh, now she who is really a widow now he's talking about uh, like I said really a widow is those who are 60 and above uh, their husband is dead, they don't have children to take care of them, don't have means to provide for themselves, you know, uh, these kind of uh, widows, you know, um, they are the ones that the church needs to take care of because they are 
they're just trusting in God. And even as the church takes care of uh, them, you know, they should give themselves up to prayer and supplication. That means they should also be involved in the ministry of the church. Uh, they should be involved in praying for the needs of various church members and uh, in supplication, praying for, uh, uh, you know, different needs and uh, uh, the burdens of the church and different people who are going through different uh, struggles. And then he says, you know, those who, but were six, but she who lives in pleasure is dead while she uh, lives. So, but those widows who, um, you know, uh, those who should be legitimately helped by the church uh, must have godly lives and not live a life of pleasure. Okay, so if you're requiring help from the church to sustain you, to help you as a widow, then you have to live a godly life. There is some requirement that is needed. You have to live a godly life and not live a life of pleasure. But the, uh, And then he says, you know, a person who lives a life of mere pleasure uh, uh, and ease is no life at all. The kind of life is living is not a life worth living. Uh, it's uh, living a, a, a dead kind of life. And, uh, and he says, this is applicable to anyone, whether you're a young widow or anyone else, you know, don't live a life of pleasure because when you do, you know, you're not living a, a godly life. You're not living any kind of life uh, that is uh, right, that is uh, helpful. And it's living a, a life of uh, death. It's living death. Okay, literally living uh, death. And he says these things command. So uh, Paul is again reminding Timothy that, uh, you know, as a good pastor, uh, uh, as a pastor who's appointed as a spiritual overseer, it's your responsibility to teach these things so that people will know uh, what God expects of them. Uh, uh, they will do what God expects them to uh, do. Okay, in verse 7, it says, uh, and these things command that they may be blameless. If we look at this same verse in the Message Bible, it renders as this, so that they will do the right thing in their extended uh, family. So uh, Paul is saying, Timothy, teach these things. So because people will not know about these things, they will think, okay, you know, it's my mother's widowed. The church is anyway taking care of widows. Let them, let me just go and give them to the responsibility of the church. Uh, but, you know, teach them that it's if they have the means to take care of their uh, widows in their own family, they should do so and not abandon them or leave them under the care of the church. The church can take care of those who are really uh, widows. Okay. Verse 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So, you know, uh, God's way... Uh, or the provision that he's made for uh, providing for the needy is uh, not just through the local congregation, but it's also through the family. Okay, so if there's somebody needy in our family, you know, it's our responsibility that we provide for them. It does not mean that, you know, we just keep on giving them uh, money and food and clothes, but also empower them if they are in a place where they can be um, empowered to earn their own uh, living to do that, but get them started off. So it's important that, you know, um, uh, as believers in the house of God, that we just don't think of the church providing for everyone who's needy, but we who are capable of earning, um, uh, taking on responsibility, it's important that through our hard work, we sustain people who are needy in our own families. Uh, and also, you know, in doing so, we also empower them to work hard and also live their own lives, but get them started, just help them in their time of uh, need. And he says, if you don't provide for your own family, which means if you don't, husbands don't take care of their own uh, wives and their children, if um, uh, uh, of children and uh, grandchildren don't take care of their own parents, elderly parents or widowed people in their family, if Paul says, you know, um, uh, they are worse than an unbeliever. And so he uses very strong terms here, strong words. Uh, basically, Paul is emphasizing uh, the responsibility of man to provide for his family and to do all that he could do to support them. And he says, as you do this, you know, this is good and pleasing to God. This is what is honoring God, pleasing to him. And if you don't do it, you know, you're worse than an uh, unbeliever. So. Um, 
you know, uh, look at verse 8, it's talking about the responsibility on a believer, uh, you know, a believer, uh, specifically a man here, but in our context, we have even women working. So, uh, you know, as, uh, as a couple, it's our responsibility to provide for our own household, but more so for a man, because he is in that position that God has called him or ordained him to be the prophet, priest, and the provider. Okay, any questions so far? Verses 1 to verse 8. Any questions, any thoughts? Any clarifications needed? Okay, today the class seems to be very silent. Okay, uh, if there are okay. no questions, uh, there no we, are, we are following and we are getting a lot of information. So we are here learning. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, yes, Mangi. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, Pastor, just need a little, a little, a little uh, clarification. Um, because it says that we should not give, be given to pleasure, life of pleasure. So when you say life of pleasure, what does he mean? Because uh, as a believer, we, we can still go on holiday, we can still uh, go to Disneyland, have fun, we can still uh, go racing. So can you please clarify uh, what, what, what he means by life of pleasure? Thank you, Pastor. Um, thank you for that question, uh, uh, Mangi. Actually, he goes on to talk about that in in the preceding, I mean, in the uh, uh, the verses that following now. So I'll explain that, and uh, if and you can, you know, understand it uh, better when I explain it. But if you still don't uh, understand it, then uh, we can come back to your question and address it. But here, uh, talking about pleasure, it's not talking about. Uh, you know, entertainment in the sense that and and we we need entertainment to refresh us, to refresh our soul and our uh, and our bodies, our minds. You know, um, so good entertainment uh, is not something that God stops us from. Uh, it's important for us. You know, uh, we can uh, uh, you know go on trips, visit countries. Uh, uh, go to Disneyland and all of those things. Uh, but it's talking about pleasures which are ungodly, uh, you know, entertainment that is ungodly, which puts in, uh, you know, affects our, our minds, our thought, our actions, our behavior, uh, and leads us into ungodliness and leads us away from uh, the truth and uh, the, the truth in the, in the word of God and the doctrine and, you know, comes to a place where we even go away from our uh, faith, where our own faith is shipwrecked. That is what he's talking about. But he explains more in detail in the in the you know uh, the verses that follow and i'll explain that uh, and if you still uh, did not if you still did not answer your question you can get uh, you know come back Maggie, and we'll discuss on that is that okay uh, thank you pastor I, I i understand thank you okay okay so we look at um, at um, verses uh, 9 to 16 he says, don't let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number. Uh, what he uh, means here is uh, that if someone is under 60, you know, uh, they can still support themselves. Uh, they can still get, uh, they can remarry. Uh, they can have somebody who can help them, support them. Uh, so, you know, don't add them in the support list of the church. Uh, but he says here that, you know, those who are really widows, which is 60 and above, who can can't really support themselves, don't have a family to support them, then they can be added to the list of the church. Yes, Sadie? Um, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that this isn't really a cast on stone approach, right? Uh, because uh, Paul might be bringing this or giving this instruction or advice in that time whereas could it be that in such a in a case whereby it happens in any of our churches um, this can be looked at um, uniquely and not just say oh because it said it in scripture we have to follow this uh, because sometimes it could be that the man 
who has passed on is actually earning more than what the wife is earning. And so my need for um, assistance from the church, and yes, she's under 60, you know. So I'm just wondering, is there wisdom in applying this advice from Paul in respect to all the other things we've learned about certain instructions that were only given to specific churches around the time of the culture and historical events of that time? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Say, for your question. So, yes, um, actually, we can use this as a framework uh, to work, you know, to, you know, bring about uh, how to uh, administer things in the, the present um, uh, local church. Um, but, you know, when it talks about younger widows, you know, um, and he, he gives, uh, gives reasons why younger widows should marry in this context, but uh, we see many of our younger widows in our context, in uh, you know, uh, in the in the country of uh, the country that I come from, that's India. You know, uh, we see many younger widows. They don't um, they don't um, uh, get married, but they of course have their family who they stay along with, who supports them, or uh, you know, we uh, help them in getting a job. They you know uh, are able to sustain themselves because they are educated if they're not educated you know uh, get them into some kind of training where they're able to sustain themselves uh, they're not totally dependent on the church because some of them can even have uh, children you know have to pay their fees and things like that um, so get the family involved get the uh, uh, you know the person uh, empower them to earn to take care of their own children uh, if they want to remarry that's uh, totally fine with them but most of them in our context they don't i've seen most of them don't some of them now they're opening up to you know uh, uh, getting uh, married it was not some that culture that was followed a few years uh, back uh, so in yeah we need to actually empower the younger widows but Specific talking about older widows, there's no point in, you know, getting them to uh, empower them to work now, uh, but the church can support them, uh, uh, fund for them. Uh, and uh, the whole context that Paul is writing here is basically the understanding that, you know, people should not take advantage of what the church is providing. Okay, so he what he's basically saying here is, hey, because church is taking care of widows, don't you know bring all the widows and put them in the list and uh, get the church to do it if, the, if they have families can support them let them take responsibility because it is uh, what god has called us to do we need to take care of our uh, uh, parents we need to take care of our family because we have the means god has given us the means to do it this is our god-given responsibility one of them we need to do it so we also need to uh, uh, speak uh, and teach this in our church but of course, if the family disowns them and has nothing to do with them and feels that they're a burden, then the church can for a few years, you know, empower them, get them a job, get them to uh, take on the responsibility. But they cannot totally be dependent on the church and not do uh, anything. So uh, we need to look at it in all angles and work it out in all angles and uh, uh, see what works best in our uh, in our basic culture in our environment or in the context that we are living in does that help say i hope pastor thank you thank yeah. you yeah why was 60 years taken as a benchmark <laughs> uh it was because you know um uh, you know people can't work you know when they get 60 they become very old they're not able to work they're not able to care for themselves. They need help. They need support. Uh, you know, they also just not need a financial support. They need emotional support. They need also uh, help from others. So, um, so basically, maybe you know, uh, the sixty years is the sun. But we are. This is what just uh, you know, uh, people are saying. I mean, uh, maybe in that context, it it worked there. It can also work in our context because many people retire at that age, right? Uh, and after that, you know, they really need help and support financially, uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally as well. Yes. That help, Kennedy? Okay. So, um, 
you know, uh, so here he says, you know, don't uh, put the younger widows in the list support list of the church. In verses 9 to 10, Paul elaborates on the conditions uh, uh, of verses 3 to 5 that he has just written about concerning needy widows. He says uh, they there are to be at least 60 years and older. Uh, they have to have served in the church well. If the church has to help them, support them, they should have served in the church well. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if they serve in the church well, then they can be taken care of in the church um, by the church uh, for their needs. And we see in verse 16 is that if their family is able to take care of them, the family should do so so that they don't become a burden to the church and the church can help those who are elderly widows uh, who are in real need. Also can be because uh, Paul is being very strict about this uh, uh, because, you know, uh, we don't see like mega churches uh, in the city of Ephesus. Uh, you know, the whole concept of church was just kind of beginning, tithing, giving to the church was all uh, uh, areas where there were people were coming to an understanding, growing. Uh, so the church was also not, um, you know, uh, very strong financially. Like we look at some of our churches today in our today's world, you know, also because um, they were living in a, a, in a time when, uh, you know, the Romans were ruling and uh, the Romans had, uh, you know, used to tax people very, very heavily in every area of their lives. So people were paying huge taxes in every area. Area. So when it came to even paying religious taxes, they expected it from the churches as well. The government wanted taxes from uh, the church. So, you know, the churches were not financially very great and sound. So Paul talking about all of these should also be seen in context, not in the context that our churches today are very rich. We can support, you know, younger widows, older widows. So he's being very, very specific about uh, details here because there were small churches, home churches, you know, and uh, uh, didn't have great uh, uh, big bank, huge fat bank balances uh, or amounts in the church of the church bank accounts uh, to support everybody. So he was making, uh, you know, strict uh, laws and uh, bringing in strict um, uh, rules uh, who to take care of and who not to take care of and also that people will not uh, make use of the church when they themselves can take on uh, responsibilities okay uh, so he says that you know those who are having a family they should not burden the church uh, so that the church can take care of the elderly widows in real need furthermore he 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 uh, uh, he says that the widow must show hospitality to strangers they should have washed the saints' feet, uh, which is showing a sign of humility. Uh, uh, as you know, like people who have served in church, um, they should also uh, these people who have, uh, uh, you know, um, helped people in distress, um, uh, pe which means you know, referring to visiting people who are sick, praying for them, giving counsel, comfort to those who are troubled and weary. So basically, the it just sums up to saying this, that, you know, uh, the widow who the church takes care of must have devoted herself to every good work, uh, should have been an active part, uh, a member in, in taking, uh, you know, a, a, an active role in the church. Uh, so he says, these widows in the church who meet these qualifications um, where uh, to be enlisted in the in, uh, in the list of widows who the church would take care of, and um, uh, because uh, you know they have already been part of the church, they have been helping, and um, you know they can also now serve in various capa capacities in the church. They can serve in terms of uh, prayer and uh, supplications. But he talks about younger widows. He says, you know, younger widows. Uh, Paul advises them to remarry uh, and they are to uh, to be a wife of one husband so again the whole concept of one man woman uh, the same qualifications which he lays down for elders and deacons which we read in uh, chapter 3 verses 2 and 12 and uh, also here he talks about younger uh, widows you know should also have a, a rep good reputation of of good works what he mentions in verse 10 uh, it also includes that these younger women should uh, be involved in bringing up children um, 
it can probably be that you know uh, that uh, this younger widow already has children before they remarry, but uh, you know is raising them up in the faith, uh, in the word, uh, uh, in the ways of the Lord. But it also can uh, refer to uh, wi widows, you know, um, or younger widows uh, who care for unwanted orphans, uh, because in the Roman world, you know, um, there were many unwanted children. Who, uh, who were left alone, uh, you know, unattended, just to die. Uh, uh, and some of these corrupt people would take them and sell them off uh, for slavery or prostitution, uh, you know, get some money out of it. Uh, but, you know, godly Christian women, uh, you know, would take them into their home, especially these widows, you know, would take them into their home and raise them up as their own children and care for uh, uh, them. So this is what he's talking about in this context of uh, when he says, you know, um, uh, uh, they should, you know, uh, uh, she should be someone who's brought up uh, children. Uh, and if she has large strangers, you know, she should, uh, you know, it's all saying that, you know, she has done some things for uh, the work of Christ, uh, has helped in the ministry of the church, and can be now enlisted in the list of widows that the church uh, cares for and uh, oversees or, uh, you know, caters for their um, needs. But he says the younger widows, he encourages them to get married, uh, set up a family, uh, instead of wasting their time in idle things and talking about, uh, you know, unnecessary, unwanted uh, things. We'll study that in a little more detail. Uh, verse 11, he says, but refuse the younger widows. Uh, so as a general rule, you know, he, uh, he tells Timothy, don't add uh, these younger widows to the support list of the local congregation uh, because they generally can provide for themselves or they could remarry and, you know, can be supported. Um, and then he says, for they have begun to grow wanton against Christ and their desire to marry. Now, this words, uh, this phrase grow wanton, um, uh, you know, this word is supposed to be derived from to remove uh, and the rain. So it's basically a metaphor, uh, which is taken from a very pampered horse, you know, uh, from whose mouth the rain has been removed so that, you know, there's nothing to check them or confine them. So here he's saying that, you know, um, like this pampered horse, which the rain has been removed from the mouth, uh, so that there's nothing to check or confine this horse. It just has total freedom. He says these younger widows are like that, you know, they are... Uh, total, totally free now because their husband is dead, no one to keep a check and control over them. And they're doing things, um, yielding to pleasures that is not right, that is not appropriate. So in verses 11 to 15, uh, you know, he goes on to talk about uh, some things which is not very easy to interpret, uh, but some understand that, you know, these older widows, uh, you know, have made some kind of pledge to the Lord and to the church that they would remain single for the rest of their life and they would devote the remaining years of their life to serving the Lord. And some of these younger widows have also made this pledge looking at the older widows that they have also stated that they don't wish to marry again. And, you know, they would like to spend their entire years of their life uh, serving the Lord. But some of them go back on these younger widows. Some of them have gone back on their pledge. And when they go back on their pledge, they incur condemnation from the church or disapproval or criticism. Uh, but Paul is not condemning the natural desire of the younger widows to remarry. What is wrong here, he's saying, is that they're basically breaking the pledge that they have made. So this is one point of view, how one uh, a, a group of people, uh, 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 writers or commentators, understand this verse. Others take it very differently. They mean that, you know, the first faith, what he talks about in this verse, verse 12, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith is basically their first faith is talking about the, the pledge that they have made, the pledge that they have made that they won't remarry and they will serve uh, the local congregation for the rest of their life. You know, um, uh, they argue that Paul was addressing an existing problem, namely that these younger widows 
were put on the support list of the church, uh, you know, were now uh, having a desire to remarry. Um, and the desire to remarry uh, is, uh, you know, Paul is not condemning it. It's He's okay with them remarrying. But what the problem is here is they were, you know, uh, their, their desire to remarry is to be greater than their faith in Christ. So much so greater than their faith in Christ that they're willing to even remarry an unbeliever. And that is what he's mentioning as, as you know, uh, wrong pleasures or ungodly uh, pleasures. He's saying it's not wrong to have this pleasure of remarrying, but he's saying this younger widows, you know, uh, they're, they're giving in so much of, to their pleasure of remarrying that it's it's greater than their love for Christ or their faith or their salvation that they have received uh, in Christ Jesus, that they are uh, even willing to marry an uh, unbeliever. And also, you know, furthermore, you know, they're following into a lot of uh, errors of false teachers. Um, and, you know, they, uh, and that is actually turning them away from their first faith in Christ because now they have a lot of time. They don't have a husband. Uh, you know, they don't have home chores that they, you know, they have freedom to roam around, talk, go from place to place, house to house, you know. And as they do this, they're easily caught up with wrong teachings because you know, they're idle. They don't have any work to do. They don't have anything to do. And, uh, you know, they're turning away their, from their faith in Christ. And and what they're doing is even as they uh, have slowly turning away from the faith in Christ, you know, they are promoting false teaching. And that is what he's talking about here. You know, um, he's saying, you know, they are uh, going from house to house, not only idle, but also gossips, uh, busy bodies and saying things which they ought not to uh, say. So what are the things that they are saying that they ought not to say is wrong teaching, uh, uh, wrong uh, uh, you know, uh, doctrines, um, uh, you know, and um, uh, they're going away from their faith, they're promoting false teaching, uh, they're marrying basis on, uh, they're mar marrying based on their sensual desires and not marrying in the Lord. And thus Paul is instructing that you know, the church should not support uh, these kind of women. It's best to avoid all of this thing uh, in the church, you know, uh, uh, which is going to be a hindrance for them if we support them. Basically, it's going to be a hindrance for them, them uh, for these younger widows, because, you know, we are giving them the freedom to uh, get into false te uh, teachings of false teachers, go around spreading all of these false teaching. Also, you know, um, uh, moving them away from the faith, not just through false teachers, but also their desire to marry outside uh, the faith. So he's saying it's best if these um, younger widows, you know, is the best if they marry in the Lord. It's best if they are devoted to their home duties so they are not idle, they're not going home to home, they're not listening to all these false teachings and they're taken away, uh, shipwrecking, their, shipwrecking their own faith and leading others astray. And also, he says, so as to give that give the enemy uh, no occasion for reproach, so that you know we are not giving room for the enemy to work in their lives. Best is to do this for uh, these younger uh, widows. So now, I hope this whole uh, idea of why he is writing this, why he is telling younger widows to remarry, why he is talking about pleasures. Uh, uh, has a better understanding and a better context and a meaning for uh, those of you who, uh, you know, had questions. Yes, Mandy. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, you've answered most of my questions. Um, just quick, just to add, I think if someone someone must have must have asked it, I think it was say. Um, context in which <clears throat> this letter is written uh or the culture is different from our culture today our culture today for example a 60 year old can be richer than a 20 year old girl or, or, or widow um why can is it okay for us or is it relevant for us to apply the same principle or uh, in, uh, same principle in our churches today because we, we are two different world. Our world is different from their world. Our world, all the people save, they have investment, they have money. Uh, 
most of them they can support themselves because they have a retirement um, money set aside and it is the younger generation that are poor that are suffering in most places not all everywhere but in, in in most places so how can we read this and look into our world today and say okay cool that was amazing it is good and what can we do with what Paul has given us that's my question thank you yes uh, thank you Mangi um, yes I understand that uh, what you're saying you know uh, older women are in a better position because they have their savings and uh, you know they're getting pension or whatever you know they can support themselves uh, but what about younger women like 20 and above who you know financially are not sound who cannot support themselves uh, well like I said you know bring them to a place where you know they're not uh, dependent on the church for the rest of their lives uh, which makes them, uh, you know, complacent and lazy uh, and get into a lot of unwanted, um, uh, you know, things like, you know, um, spending because they're being supported by the church, the children are being supported by the church, so they know that you know, they have a lot of free time, then they can engage in uh, in in pleasures that are not uh, pleasing to God, which is not godly, can be led astray from their own faith, listening to uh, teachings that are not right, um, uh, uh, will have no sense of responsibility, you know, but it's important that we um, uh, bring them to a place where we empower them, like I said, empowering them, uh, you know, supporting them to an extent where they, you know, till we empower them to manage life on their own, um, uh, to get a job, to work, or even to work in the church where they're paid so that, you um, you know, uh, most of their needs are met if uh, some of their uh, expenses like uh, children's uh, uh, education is, uh, you know, is something that they can't meet, then the church can meet. But they also know that they have a sense of uh, responsibility. And, you know, it's not leaving them uh, idle so that, you know, Satan can use that uh, you know, their idleness uh, in, in ways that can bring uh, shipwreck to their own faith, destroy their own faith, lead them away from God and indulge in pleasures which is not godly and pleasing. So if you look at verse 15, he says, for some have already turned aside after uh, Satan. And verse 14, he says, you know, so that we don't give opportunity to the advisor who to speak reproachfully. Okay, so basically he's talking about Satan, who's, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, give him no opportunity to uh, work in our lives, to lead us astray. So keep them engaged, keep them uh, uh, busy so that they're involved in, you know, working, taking care of their home, their responsibility, their children. Uh, if they don't have children, then what do you do? You know, best to get these kind of uh, women uh, married again so that you know they have sense of responsibility they have a family uh, it will also be an emotional and mental support uh, rather than being lonely and you know being just busy body sitting around gossiping talking and uh, doing nothing and wasting away their lives so yes uh, the church has a responsibility but also greater responsibility in empowering them and making sure that they're not left aside to the attack of the evil one which can destroy their faith and can also destroy others connected to them. Did that help, Mangi? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what, what I get from your answer, uh, like just the big picture, is that to help them, to, to empower them to become their own. Uh, so the best thing they can do is, if the church can do is to empower them, to yeah, educate them or help them. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, because, you know, when you empower them, they become, uh, they have, they build, they build up in their own self-image, their self-value, uh, you know, and uh, they have their sense of purpose. They know their God-given calling and purpose, irrespective of what has happened to them very early on in life that, you know, they are uh, widows, uh, that they have not lost everything in life, but they have a God-given purpose a God-given identity, a God-given calling, to identify their God-given purpose, identity, and calling, and to fulfill that. Because all of us, 
you know, whether irrespective of whether we're married, unmarried, young, old, widows, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 living with our spouses, we all have a God-given calling, purpose, and identity. And that is what is more uh, enriching and fulfilling than just, you know, being married or being a widow or whatever. You know, fulfilling God's purpose for our life, His calling over our lives is so much more important um, than anything else. So, you know, getting them to see that, following that, pursuing that can empower them, uh, you know, and also empower the church because they're, you know, bringing in their expertise, their calling and their gifting to the church, uh, which can help the church as uh, well. Is that uh, fine, Mangi? Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you, Pastor. Yes, Divya. Yeah, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I just had uh, a comment and a question. Uh, the, um, it's uh, in Acts chapter 9, uh, where it talks about uh, Tabitha or Dorcas, the widow, uh, when you were uh, explaining the kind of uh, widow that was mentioned right in uh, this chapter. Uh, I believe this person, Dorcas or Tabitha, is a person who was very instrumental in the among the widows in the community, among the believer widows in the community, because um, she she was she died uh, she she died and uh, all the widows were like weeping and crying and bringing in uh, all the garments that she uh, made for them and uh, and ultimately you know like uh, Peter K comes there and ministers and she uh, was raised from the dead. So I believe that is an example of a widow that. Uh, uh, is really instrumental in 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 a community in a believers um, or maybe a church setting mm, and my question is also based on the culture that we are living in uh especially uh we uh, see a lot of uh women uh sometimes separated from their husbands uh, because might be lots of reasons uh many of them are like the husbands abandon the wives uh leave the leave the wives with children and to take care maybe the wives are not working and uh what about them like uh not uh, i don't know whether in this context uh, when we talk about widows uh in in our context uh, in our culture um are they included like those people who have been you know abandoned like they have nothing maybe there is nothing that they uh, contributed that caused them to be abandoned right so uh so what what can churches you know in, the, in these situations will they also be supported right um yeah that's my one question thank you divya so you know church is inclusive of uh, people of all ages, uh, across all ages, uh, you know, from different cultures, different uh, society backgrounds, social standing, um, and also people, you know, who are widowed, people who are elderly, uh, people who are single parents, people who have been abandoned by their family because of their faith, uh, or, uh, you know, abandoned by their husbands. So we have people from different uh, you know, uh, uh, different uh, kind of uh, uh, upbringings, different kind of cultures, and also, you know, uh, situations that they are facing in life. So the church actually caters to people across all of these uh, age groups, all of the challenges that they are uh, facing. So yes, if um, a person has been abandoned by their uh, you know, husband. Uh, they have no means. You know, they come to the church. They, uh, you know, they uh, share their needs. Uh, the church can support them. Again, like we said, you know, for young widows, how we can help them out, how we can support them, empower them. Uh, you know, get them to see that this is not the end of uh, life, that God still has a plan and purpose for them uh, and how they can go about fulfilling God's plan and purpose for their lives and how, you know, the the church is a community, believers can pitch in and help. That's what the early church did, right? They sold everything uh, that everyone had. They brought everything together and, you know, they supported those who are in need and things like that. So even churches today do that, you know, they 
the 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 groups or life groups or certain families to support this uh, uh, this this person who's abandoned because of their faith their family abandoned them or their husband abandoned them whatever or the children you know abandon them uh, when the husband is dead now the children are far away you know they have uh, old age homes, they have people who care for them, uh, support them, uh, also, you know, do their best to speak to people uh, uh, related to them, how they can come and support, uh, you know, like Paul says, you know, preach and teach these things because, you know, the family has to support them. But if they still don't want to do it, then, you know, uh, the church steps in, the pastor steps in, see how uh, the church can be involved, uh, the people in the church uh, uh, can uh, be involved. So even yesterday we were discussing about uh, one person who we know who is, you know, who's, who's worked hard all of her life, she's retired as a teacher, had a stroke now, and, uh, you know, is uh, dependent on, lives with her brother and his family. They don't want to, you know, do basic physiotherapy, though it was not a major stroke, a mild stroke. They do physiotherapy, she can walk, but they don't want to just spend that basic little amount uh, for the physiotherapy and they don't they've stopped even people coming from church to visit her so uh, one church member was saying you know i'm going to speak to the pastor today and tell him this is a situation uh, the pastor can go and speak and see what can be done to help this uh person so yes uh, there are situations where we need to step in speak do what we can do to help empower strengthen and uh, see that the person is uh, you know uh, uh is uh, you know uh, given the grace and the strength and empowerment to continue living their lives and if they're needy just go in and help yes thank you thank you ma'am yeah yeah okay we'll uh, before we end class we'll uh, listen to christopher's question christopher and then we'll end class if it's so okay with the rest of y'all yes christopher oh yes thank you pastor no, just uh, just to add to that i think you already mentioned this uh, you know there, there is the uh, you know this uh, institution of uh, uh, old age homes and um, I think in some scenarios it it um, you know it provides a, an alternative uh, you know when when the children are of this of this um, widow is is not um, is out of the country or you know they just just not is just not uh, uh, not able to provide that level of um, you know service and uh, you know attention age old homes can be an alternative uh, and you know, uh, a lot of Christian uh, denominations have set up these age uh, uh, old age homes, where uh, you know they have uh, comprehensive uh, you know facilities available, as well as the uh, you know the the people there are all you know maybe in the same age group, and you know they have uh, you know they have common interests, and uh, you know they can they can live uh, uh, a, a life which is uh, you know uh, more. Uh, uh, you know, reasonable and better than you know what what could have, could have been provided by by children who you know who maybe may not be able to provide that uh, that level of attention. Yeah, I think uh, Christopher, I would uh, you know defer on that because I think you know the parent when it comes to old age, uh, they're not looking for uh, you know uh, 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 a lot of uh, pleasures like you know. Uh, you know, traveling or a car or you know uh, uh, iPad or something like that they just want uh, their family who they loved and cared for all these years just to be with them just to see their faces you just give them basic meals they are very happy with that but taking them and putting them in an old age home where they're away from their loved ones their family give them the best of food it's not going to please them if you put them with people with you know who are this they have the same age who they can relate to it's not going to make up for their own children their own grandchildren or their you know their family the home that they lived in the home that they built uh, built up all these years what makes them feel happy is that they're in their home that they are with their children uh, whatever you know whether it is uh, elaborate meal a simple meal they have just food but they're with the family that is what gives them great joy and satisfaction and i would not agree on you know putting them in an old age home uh you know when we have the means to just take care of them uh, at home I, I understand if some of some of them need special care and all of that 
uh, that also can be very very detrimental to their health they don't they don't last long i've seen that in the case of my own family members two of them you know uh, my grandmother who was 90 plus and they couldn't take care of her at home anymore and they put her in an old age home and she died in a couple of uh, in a couple of weeks to say uh, it was sad and uh, my uncle uh, you know um, uh, they were just going to shift into old age home because they couldn't take care of him at home because the others were working my cousins were working and he kept saying that throughout the night okay how many more hours before i day break and i have to go to an old age home and uh, you know they kept telling him the number of hours and just by early dawn he passed away you know it's just so heartbreaking for them and i think uh, nothing would you know fill in for their homes and their own family uh you know or just uh, basic bills that they have nothing can take that risk yeah so i wouldn't agree whatever you know do your best to take care of their your parents as much as you can do uh, the best yeah i won't uh, talk about every case uh, but this is and what other people feel this is what i think i know everyone has their own opinions and you can go by your opinions yeah that's uh, left up to how you think and what is feasible for you and comfortable for you and what how much you can do yes <laughs> so that uh help christopher yeah yeah right i mean yeah. I, I said that there are always some exceptions so yeah i mean i i think uh, there, there will be some different uh, different views to that yeah yeah yes thank you yeah okay thank you everyone for the class sorry it went uh, six minutes uh beyond time um thank you everyone yeah. have a blessed week uh yes maggie want to say something oh uh, it was a mistake. Uh, thank you so much, Fas. Thank you for patience and answering our questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mangi, for joining class. Uh, have a blessed week. God bless all of you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.